I knew that was going to happen. Bear with me a second. <laughs> Bear with me a second. I've put, I've just changed my cameras and uh, uh, and it keeps on freezing. And I thought, right, I'll give it one more go. So hopefully you can hear me. I am here. Bear with me a sec. Oh, that's what you get for trying something new when it's live. Uh, give us a shout, guys, if you are there. If you want to pop a comment in the comments uh, section. Uh, if only we had behind-the-scenes uh, camera footage. Bear with me a second, and I'll just get this all set up. Morning, morning. Hey, good, good, Shelley. Good, good. There we go. Bear with me a second. So, yeah, don't get the new... Well, don't get the GoPro, um, the new one. <laughs> because it it keeps on freezing. Uh, blooming nightmare. Uh, there we go. We are. We're there. Cool. Uh, apologies. Um, yeah, it's one of those where, again, all set up, nice, ready to go. And uh, and then uh, yeah, and then everything cocks up. So uh, welcome uh, to Monday morning. Um, good morning, everyone. Looks like we've got a few. We've got Tristan in. Morning, Tristan. Uh, Shelley's here. Uh, two weeks in a row, brilliant. And then um, yeah, I've posted a little link in the group again um, because otherwise, if you don't click on that link, I get this. Um, so good morning, Facebook user. <laughs> uh morning neil uh and, um, yes ah oh, this uh sent to try us isn't it all this technology oh blimey we've got a few in this morning julie's here as well good morning and facebook user morning everyone um if you're uh, on uh, facebook then you can see who it is but if you haven't clicked the ecamm link uh, that uh, should be the last thing i posted in the group then i won't be able to see who you are on my comments uh, feed um, so, um, yeah, I was just going to try and um, show you what I see, but uh, do it behind the scenes one day. Uh, right then, so we are, we've nearly, nearly finished the wrist and hand. Um, it's, uh, this is the fifth episode, I think, so you can see the kind of detail. Uh, morning, Al. Uh, good to have you in, mate. Um, you, can get, you can see the detail that's in this, this region. So what I've tried to do, and hopefully this will help you revise it, is... Um, is go deep muscles, uh, the ones that flex the, the fingers, first of all, um, then uh, then the more superficial ones that flex the fingers, then the deep ones that extend the fingers, then the superficial ones that extend the fingers, uh, and then we're gonna go into the thumb, okay? So we'll do the thumb today, and, uh, and then we'll do, um, we'll finish off probably next week with the intrinsic muscles of the hand. So we haven't even got to these um, chunky bits of your hand here, which is the thenar eminence and the hypothenar eminence uh, just there. Uh, no, hey, Charlie, how you doing? <laughs> good to see you, Anne Stevie. Good morning, good morning. We've got a few in this morning from the diploma as well. Good to see you guys. Um, cool. So yeah, we're um, uh, going to finish off all of the flexors and extensors for the th for the thumb um, and the last few extensors of the of the wrist as well. And before we do that, we'll do a very quick recap. I'll just uh, bring this up here. Um, what I thought about doing as well is because obviously there's loads of uh, videos uh, that are uh, in the group, and it's it's tough to know which one's which. So I'm going to put this um, this rolling um, scrolling ticker thing across the bottom. So when you're looking at all the videos and you see them all, then you can see which episode it is. So it's only taken me to episode 43 to think of that. Um, but we're going to do that now. And blimey, we are blessed this morning. Uh, Dan is here. Good morning, Dan. Good to see you, mate. Um, cool. So... Um, Let's have a bit of a recap then. So we, 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 we were looking at, last week, the compartments of the wrist. So if this is your first session for a while and you're thinking, what the heck is he on about, it's because we covered this over the last couple of weeks. Um, so we've got um, uh, th this area here of the wrist is split into six different uh, compartments. Um, or it's turning into a bit of a social uh, Steve, Steve's asked who's going in, uh, who's going to Therapy Expo in November. 
Um, me, I'll be there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Can you believe it? Dan, Dan Williams in the group. There we go. Um, so, um, yeah, if, if you've not heard of Therapy Expo before, thanks for mentioning that, Stevie, actually. It's, uh, uh, it's the, the first face-to-face uh, -face conference, I think, in the, in the therapy calendar um, for nearly two years. So, uh, so if you can make it, it'd be great. Um, I'm going to be involved in the Sports Therapy Association uh, lecture theatre and with Rock Tape as well. So I'll be there um, for, with those guys too. Um, oh, it looks like a few of you are going good. So it's, it's a good a good chance to get together and, and see each other. And uh, you go, oh, I didn't realise you were that short <laughs> when you meet me. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it'll be, um, it should be a good, uh, good session. Um, and that lots of good, lots of good speakers there. Oh, good, Michelle. Good. First time going. Brilliant. You'll have a great time. Um, the loads and loads of lecture theatres. Well, usually, hopefully it will be um, similar, uh, similar this time as well. And um, uh, yeah, just loads of stuff going on. Meet loads of people. That'd be really good. And uh, yeah, hopefully I see a few of you there. Um, right. So back to the wrist. So if you, um, let's have a look. So th this is as if you're looking at your right wrist, kind of fingers on, okay? So that's what this image is, uh, this is, image is here. So on the left-hand side of this image is the ulna. So that's on the little finger side of your, if you were looking at the end of your right, right hand. And then the radius is on the thumb side, okay? So going from the thumb side all the way across, we've got six compartments of the wrist. And we've, we've had a look at a few of them and um, we're gonna add on the others now. So I'm just gonna do a bit of a recap first. So in this middle kind of section here, so right in the center of the wrist, that's where your um, extensor, uh, let's grab my uh, extensor digitorum is. Let me just grab my arrow, there we go. Okay, so EDC is extensor digitorum communis, it's sometimes called, or extensor digitorum. And um, uh, I can't remember what the P is actually on the extensor indices. Might be profundus. I'm not. I'm not sure. But th this is the extensor indices. Okay. So EI extensor indices is your index finger. So it extends your index finger. Okay. So you have um, four tendons that go to all four fingers, which are these four. One, two, three, four. And that's your extensor digitorum because they extend your digits but they don't extend your thumb. Your thumb is called your pollux with a P, okay? So those four extensions are from, uh, well, mostly from ED, which is the um, extensor digitorum. And then you've also got an additional extension muscle that goes into the um, index finger, and that's the extensor indices. Um, so we had a look at those uh, last week. So just a quick recap of those. So there you go, all the way down there, and then splits into four. And and um, they kind of they, there's an extensor mechanism on the back of the fingers, uh, which is like a big piece of connective tissue, and they all slot into there. Okay, so that's uh, that's those. And then the extensor indices is a bit of a smaller muscle, and then it goes all the way down to the end of your index finger. Okay, so uh, so that's that one. So your index finger has got two tendons that extend it. Okay, and the, the middle and the fourth finger have only got one. All right, so that's got two. And then you might have seen my, um, uh, I wonder if I put it on this one, actually, I think I did. So we've got, um, then the next compartment along is extensor digiti minimi. Okay, so this little one all on its own, um, so towards the ulnar side, so remember looking at your fingers on the right-hand side, so you've got a little tendon all on its own there, and that's extensor digiti minimi, and that goes to your little finger, and that's it, and it comes all the way um, from up there on the lateral epicondyle. Okay, so all the way down, all the way down to the little finger. So you have two... Um, uh, muscles that specifically extend the little finger and the index finger and then a combined tendon that extend all four so your index and your little finger have got two tendons and the middle two fingers they've only got one okay um so that is them and uh, i think i put it on here yeah there we go from last week 
Okay, so it extends the digit e minimi, does that. Okay, so if you remember, well, you can't forget, can you now? You, you'll never get that image out of your head. Um, so minimi and minimi. There you go. Love that. Um, and then muscles of the wrist. Okay, so uh, we, we've covered a couple of these, um, but um, we've not gone into real uh, detail, so we've kind of mentioned them. So we've had a look at extensor digitorum, so extending the digits. Then we've had a look at extensor digiti minimi, extensor um, uh, digiti indices as well, so the um, proprius. Thank you, Al. Thank you very much. I'm not even sure what that means. Have a look at the meaning for that, Al, for us. Thank you, mate. Um, it's, it's great having Al here. He look, looks at all the things that I can't remember. So, um, yeah, have a look, see what proprius means. I've, I've no idea. So if you've not met Al before, he teaches our movement therapy diploma up in Liverpool. So, uh, yeah, he, he's my um, keyboard warrior on a Monday morning. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Um, right, so wrist extenses then, the rest of them. Uh, um, oh, yeah, so the ones we've just had a look at were... Um, uh, into the fingers, so that they only um, they're going to assist with wrist extension as well. But their main job is finger extension because of where they attach. But with the pulleys in the extensor retinacular, it's going that they are going to have an effect on wrist ex extension as well. But these ones specifically are, are focused on wrist extension only, so they don't go into the fingers. All right, so if you have a look at the names of these, you'll see why. So we've got extensor carpi, so that means they attach into the carpals, uh, radialis longus, so they're going to influence the carpal rows, okay? Um, extensor carpi radialis brevis, and then extensor carpi ulnaris. So let's just break down these words a sec. So extensor means they're going to extend, carpi means the carpals, and then radialis is there's it's on the radius side, um, and then longus is long, and brevis means short. So you've got two muscles, one that's longer, one that's shorter, and um, they both run along the radius and insert into around well influence that carpal row. Okay, and then extensor carpi ulnaris is an extensor into the carpals or around the carpal region. And it's on the ulnar side. Okay, so massively long names for things. Um, but um, yeah, the, when you break it down, then it's it makes it a bit obvious what it is. So wrist extensors, here we go. So again, we're looking at these compartments. So we've just had a look at this compartment here. Yeah, so compartment, um, uh, compartment four. So that had your uh, extensor digitorum in and then your extensor indices uh, just in there. And then extensor digiti minimi was in that one. Okay, so we're now in compartment two, and this is by the radius, so it's near the thumb side. And we've got ECRB, so extensor carpi radialis brevis, and ECRL, extensor carpi radialis longus. So they are on this side of your wrist. Okay, so towards that thumb side. Um, this one, Extensor carpi radialis brevis, you'll see in a second, um, attaches right on your lateral epicondyle and is one of the ones that we think is most um, uh, is the most provocative if you have tennis elbow. I mean, and there are lots of other things that attach into there as well, um, but there is a clinical test you can do, um, and I'll show you it in a second, and uh, you can pretty much pinpoint exactly where it's sore, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, so let's have a look at this. So this is ECRL, so extensor carpi radialis longus. Um, so it's on the supracondylar ridge. So it's just above the elbow. So it, into the humerus on this point. Um, ah, cool. Thanks, Al. Let's have a look. So proprius, uh, one's own, belonging to oneself. Okay. Uh, not shared with others. There you go. That makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, so it only goes to the index finger. There you go. Every day is a school day. Thanks, Al. Um, so yeah, this um, uh, so the ECRL L goes up onto the humerus, onto the side of the humerus bone. So you've got that. We looked at this in the elbow. 
looking for the right, um, right place. So there is a ridge on the side of your humerus. Okay, the, um, there's a ridge on both sides, um, laterally and medially. And uh, it's, a, it's a bit of like a sharp point. And that is where your ECRL atta attaches. Okay, so onto there and onto the lateral epicondyle as well. So it's shared. Um, but if you have a look where it goes down to, so it goes down to the base of the second metacarpal. Okay, so da down to your um, uh, index finger. Okay, so right at the base of there. Um, so that, when it contracts, is obviously going to extend, extend the wrist and it comes from up here. When you grip, as well, that's going to create tension in those muscles, and that's why they're usually involved in uh, tennis elbow problems. Okay, so ECRL and then ECRB, extensor carpi radialis brevis. So this is the smaller one, and it's smaller because the it doesn't attach on that supracondylar ridge, so it doesn't go all the way up to this area here. It stops here. Okay, so right on that uh, lateral epicondyle. Um, and we'll have a look at those uh, now. Let's just switch on to the videos. Let's get rid of that one. And bring that one in. There we go. Okay, let's have a look at this. So, um, yeah, just give you a bit of an orientation. So I've, I've superimposed some, um, some arrows and stuff on here. So that's your lateral epicondyle. Uh, so you're looking at the outside of the uh, of the elbow, so lateral epicondyle just there. So extensor carpi radialis longus and brevis. They're pretty close to each other. If I just pause that there, uh, just there and there. And then you've got ECU, which is extensor carpi ulnaris. So that's this one down here. And and again, when you're looking at these kind of videos, and you look in an anatomy lab, if you if you get a chance to go to those you literally have to pick up the muscles and feel where they go because they all kind of merge together. And especially in this region, it's really, really difficult to be able to isolate and pinpoint uh, specific, uh, specific muscles. Yeah, we've got our very own Susie Tent in today. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> uh, if, I, if only I was as funny as um, Sean Locke. There we go. Um, so... Yeah, we've got uh, ECRB and ECRL just along here. So longus, there you go. So it attaches on that supracondylar ridge and onto the lateral epicondyle. Okay, so that's where longus attaches onto there and there. So that is your ECRB and ECRL share that insertion. So I'm just going to move that back a bit. There we go. Stuck a picture of a tennis player in there as well so this is a really common site this is your tennis elbow site so lateral epicondylopathy let's uh, try saying that three times fast uh, why don't we call it lateral epicondylitis anymore well it depends um, if it's a brand new tissue irritation then it could be a lateral epicondylitis because the tissue is inflamed if they've had it for quite some time then it's less likely to be an itis because there's unlikely to be inflammation there it's more likely then to be an opathy which is just pain basically so it's pain in that region um so that's where ecrb extensor carpi radialis brevis and ecrl share that insertion okay so any kind of gripping sport really um you get it a lot with bodybuilders as well um gripping onto dumbbells rows that that kind of thing um, so uh, yeah, um, it's a, a common uh, common place where people have issues. So let's have a look at those. So that that's the common extensor tendon. So they both kind of go into the same tendon, and then that tendon just kind of is really broad over that um, joint line. And then down here, just pause that there. This is the attachment for the extensor carpi ulnaris. So this, this has got a really, really long origin on the ulna. Uh, so a really broad origin. Um, whenever muscles have got a really broad origin like that, you know that they can generate a lot of force, right? Um, but just because of the amount of contact they have with the bone. Um, so that's ECU. I haven't looked at that one yet, so we, we will in a sec. And this here, let me just pause that there. This is the extensor retinacular, and you know those images that we've just been seeing with the loops on, 
the, the tunnels that they go through, all those different compartments, that's what it looks like, okay? So um, that there would be your second compartment, which is what we looked at on the picture. So that's where your ECRB and ECRL go through. So they'll go through there and then down onto the, their attachments onto the uh, metacarpals, okay? And then ECU is in this one here, okay? So you can see the what they look like in real life. So you've seen that picture, looks like loads of little tunnels with the, with the tendons going through and that's basically what it is in real life. So let's just have a look at those. There we go. I forgot I put those on. That's quite handy. Okay, so we've got ECRL, ECRB in here. So that's that compartment there, compartment two. Okay, and uh, that, that's what we were looking at before. And then compartment six, your ECU. So extensor carpi ulnaris goes down there. Okay, and we'll have a look at what they do. There we go. So you can see where they attach. So ECRB, ECRL, so it's uh, longest brevis, longest brevis. Remember that from last week. So longest attaches into that one, brevis attaches into that one. And, and that's important actually, that third met attachment, um, because that's why the clinical test works. And then the, the fifth met is ulnaris, extensor carpi ulnaris. So because you know where ECRB goes from and to, you can do this test where you resist finger uh, middle finger extension. And so you push up and then, and it, in fact, you can do it on yourself actually. So if you w wiggle your middle finger up and down and have a feel of your lateral epicondyle, you'll be able to feel your ECRB, okay? If you can't feel it, just use a bit of a broader contact. And then once you feel something moving, then you can be a bit more specific. Um, but yeah, if you do that, then you know you're on ECRB. And then if you do a resisted test, so push down on the finger and they've got to try and hold it still. Uh, if that recreates their symptoms, then it's, it's likely that it's that muscle that's causing the issue. Okay, so uh, you can be quite specific with that. And then uh, ECU, extensor carpi ulnaris, uh, that's on the fifth met. So that's going to bring about some ulnar deviation as well as extension of the wrist. Okay, it depends on um, how many of the muscles are activating at the same time. Cool, I think that... Is it for that one? Yeah, perfect. So let's just go back to the um, PowerPoint a sec. So uh, we had uh, brevis, and then we were, and we've just looked at ECU. So this is the sixth compartment on this on the edge there. Uh, this is on the ulna. Okay, so um, when you, um, in fact, you you can palpate this one. So if you ulna deviate your wrist, you'll feel a tendon really poke out. As you as you go into that ulnar deviation, and and that's your um, ECU, and um, you can feel it just there, and it goes it goes all the way down onto the um, onto that fifth met. Uh, cool, and there you go. Yeah, so lateral epicondyle via, via the common extensor tendon plus the ulnar border, which we saw that long border, and then down into the base of the fifth. So it it will extend and ulnar deviate the wrist. And it makes sense because of where it attaches. If that shortens, it's going to bring your wrist that way and that way. Okay, all on its own. Hi, Amy. Good to have you. Don't worry. Um, yeah, you just um, missed our little um, uh, episode of uh, Countdown <laughs> earlier. Uh, cool. So that is the uh, most of the extensor compartments. There's still some more to go, okay? So there are six compartments all together, and the last compartment, compartment one, is on the thumb side, okay? And these are the, uh, the muscles that extend and abduct the, um, the thumb, okay? So let's have a look at these. Um, again, we'll break down the words. So we've got flexor, so that's gonna flex the thumb, obviously. Pelusis, which is the name for your thumb, so the, the thumb name is, is Pollux, and um, your big toe is a Hallux. So th um, remember, they've got their own uh, specific names. We've got a Longus, which is pretty long, and we've got a Brevis, which is the short one. Okay, so we've got cup, um, three long um, thumb muscles and then one short one. 
all right? And these are the long, I've called these long muscles of the thumb because they're not intrinsic muscles in the hand. They come from the forearm and influence thumb movements. So they're coming, from, they're coming from around here, okay? So let's have a look at those. So your thumb flexor, uh, this is it's really broad, uh, broad muscle uh, just here. And in fact, I'm gonna have to move that one, get rid of that. There you go. And you can see it come all the way down to the end of the thumb, yeah? So um, that thumb flexor is the only um, long flexor of your thumb, okay? You've got some other intrinsic muscles that help bring about uh, flexion and, and some other movements, um, but that's the that's the only long flexor on your thumb, okay? So it's anterior surface of the radius and from the interosseous membrane, which is the bit in between your ulna and radius. So we'll have a look at that. Attaches on the distal phalanx, so it's the last bone on your thumb, okay? And it will flex your thumb, that's basically what it does. We'll have a look at the nerve supply over the next couple of weeks. Cool, so we've got two thumb extensors and one abductor. So let's have a look at those. These are involved in uh, this condition, um, well, it's a, pi a picture of the region that has the condition, uh, called de Quervain's, uh, de Quervain's tenosynovitis. So around your tendons, you have a tendon sheath. And that tendon sheath is full of fluid so that the tendon can, um, can pass through it. Sometimes those areas can get irritated, so the this, this sheath starts to swell. And you can see, um, see the fluid um, in, the, in the tendon sheath with the little tendon in the middle. The problem is there's nowhere for it to go because the, uh, the tunnels, the extensor retinacular that they go through, um, they, there's no give. So it's very similar to a carpal tunnel with the median nerve. Uh, these uh, tendons on, on the thumb, when they get irritated, there's nowhere for the swelling to go. So it then starts to irritate the tendon and you can get really, really um, real bad soreness on the, um, uh, on the thumb side of the wrist. Uh, let me just type it out for you because it's a weird um, spelling. It's two words. Uh, or three words would be right uh, to be more accurate. And that's what it's called. So it's called a de Quervain's, um, probably because someone called de Quervain came up with it initially, a uh, tenosynovitis. So it's an inflammation of the synovial membrane around the tendon sheath. <laughs> okay, so a tenosynovitis, and, that, and that's what um, it usually irritates this, uh, this portion here. It can be excruciating, if anybody's uh, ever had that before. And it, it, it involves the muscles that we're going to look at now. Okay, so we've got um, uh, we've got abductor pollicis longus. So that will abduct your thumb. Okay, we've got extensor pollicis brevis. Okay, so that's going to extend your thumb. And then this one here that isn't labelled is going to be longus. So this is extensor pollicis longus. Okay, so if you remember when we were looking at the um, the compartments of the wrist, and I said the way to remember it was longus brevis, longus brevis, longus. Okay, here we go. Uh, where are we? This one here, so longus, which is the first one, brevis, which is the second one, and then in between that one and that one, so that's compartment one, in compartment two that's just there, you've got extensor carpi radialis longus, extensor carpi radialis brevis so they're in between there but they go in a different direction and then longus again okay so you've got longus brevis longus brevis which aren't shown on this picture but that's your ecr l ecr b longus okay told you the wrist was tough yeah <laughs> okay so if we have a look here um, so uh, this is compartment three, so extensor pollicis longus. If I just go back to that, which is that one there. Okay, that's that one there. So extensor pollicis longus, and that is in its own compartment in compartment three, just there. All right, um, that one we've looked at before. 
So that was ECRL, ECRB, and then we've got extensor pollutus longus in that one. Okay, I'll try and recap as we go and, and do it again and again so it gets in your head. Um, th these are, honestly, I've been doing this for like nearly 20 years and I still have to do some revision on the wrist anatomy. Okay, it's, um, yeah, ah, there you go. <laughs> Thanks, Susie. There you go, Fritz de Quervain died in 1940 and left us with a legacy of de Quervain's tenosynovitis. Thank you, Fritz. Um, brilliant. Thanks, Al. Appreciate that. Um, cool. So we, yeah, that this is the longest, and you can see why it's called longest. Well, it goes the furthest, and it's a really, really long muscle, and all of that, all of that muscle to extend your thumb. Okay. So again, it shows, I think, how. Um, important some areas of the body are when they've got a lot of muscles or big muscles that um, that do certain jobs. <laughs> Cheers, mate. I appreciate that. Um, cool. And then here we are. So this is the uh, this is the first compartment, which is on the edge of your thumb. Okay. So we've got abductor pollutus longus, extensor pollutus brevis. So those, those were the ones that we saw on that main picture. If I just go back there. Abductor pollusus longus, that one there. Okay. Extensor pollusus brevis, that one just there. Okay. And these you can see. So if you have a feel on the outside of your, of your thumb and abdu abduct the thumb, you can feel the abductor tendon. And then if you extend the thumb, you can see the extensor tendon. If I do it in the right angle, I have to do it that way. There you go. Okay, so you can see the extensor and the abductor, and they form something called the anatomical snuff box. Which in the olden days, used to put a bit of snuff tobacco in there and sniff out of there. Okay, so that's the anatomical snuff box. Underneath there, we talked about this when we were looking at the bones, is the scaphoid bone. Okay, so again, this can be quite a sensitive area if someone's fallen. Uh, so, and we need to um, ascertain whether this is a, a, a fracture of the scaphoid, they've got something wrong there, or whether it's a tenosynovitis de Quervain's. Okay, so that's what the kind of things we would look for clinically um, in that region. They're quite common, uh, common problems to have. Um, cool, right, let's go back to that one. Yeah, so that, that's the, um, the first compartment. So abductor pollusus longus, where you abduct the thumb, and then extensor pollusus brevis, which extends the thumb. Okay. Uh, there you go. There's abductor. Look at the size of that. It's massive. Okay, so proximal half. So the, the half that's nearest to your elbow. Yeah, so they, it attaches on, on half of the ulna and, and a third of the radius. That's huge. Yeah, so again, we can see how important that thumb is. Uh, to our body because we've got these massive muscles um, and if you think about the um, uh, the kind of movements um, that that they do um, the the main muscles for the the thumb moving into opposition and adduction are in the hand they're the really short muscles so the short muscles here um, there, there's a few of those as well that we need to cover. Okay, so that those are really, really powerful adductors. These ones here, we've got um, we've got two massive extensors of that of that thumb. Okay, um, really, really big muscles. So abductor pollusus longus, um, extensor pollusus brevis. Okay, so that's the short one, um, shorter one of the two, and it attaches onto the proximal phalanx of the thumb. So that's why it's brevis because it's shorter. It attaches just onto the proximal phalanx, which is that one. That's the distal right on the end. Okay, so that's the proximal. Covered that way back in the first session. Okay, so um, uh, well, let's have a look at those. Bear with me a second. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, so this one, hopefully, we'll get rid of that one. Here we go. Okay, so this is your uh, flexor pollusus longus, hopefully. 
Yeah, there we go. Okay, let me just pause that there. Cool. So some of the muscles that we've seen before from last couple of weeks, uh, you've got your uh, flexor digitorum superficialis uh, muscles just here. So that is your carpal tunnel. So that's your flexor retinacular. So on the extensor side, all the muscles that do that, they've got their own little tunnel. On the flexor side, it's just one big tunnel, which is the carpal tunnel. Okay, so they, they aren't separated there. Um, but on the on the extensor side, we've got six separate little tunnels that all of those go through. OK, um, and you can see that the flexor pollusis goes through that that tunnel as well. All right, let's have a look at that. So, yep, there's your flexor digitorum superficialis, moving that one out of the way. These that's your profundus, so the one that's deep to it. And then there, that massive muscle there, huge again. Look at that broad contact onto the um, interosseous membrane. So it's on the radial side and then comes all the way through the carpal tunnel and then attaches right at the end of your thumb. So we can see it there. It's the only flexor of your thumb. So through that tendon sheath all the way to the end and there's your distal phalanx attachment just there. So you can see when it gets pulled, it's going to bring your thumb in. Okay, so all of the others, can you see here, so we did this over the last couple of weeks, so that one there, and that one's going to be flexor digitorum superficialis, because it's superficial, and then that one next to it, flexor digitorum profundus, because it's profound, so it's deep, okay, so superficialis and profundus, so all of your fingers, finger flexors, you've got two, finger uh, thumb flexors, you've only got one. Okay, so that's those. Let's have a look at these. So this is on the other side now. Okay, so we're looking at the extensors and abductors of the thumb. So uh, now we're back onto the compartments in the extensor region. So compartment number one, abductor pollusus longus, extensor pollusus brevis. So remember, longus brevis. And then the next one along is longus brevis again but that's your ECRL, ECRB. And then we've got longus again, which attaches onto your thumb, extensor pollusus longus. And that's in compartment three. Okay, ready, here we go. So extensor digitorum, take those away. Don't need those. Let's have a look underneath. So abductor pollusus longus. Again, look at the size of that muscle. They, these are quite huge and then extensor pollusus brevis and longus there. So you can see how they separate and then go into their respective tunnels okay, around that extensor retinacular. That's your pollusus brevis. Again, a, d like a double um, contact. So you can see again how, how powerful that muscle is going to be. So hopefully we'll follow them through. Here we go. And then these will then go through there you go and this is where you get problems with let me just go back just pause that in the right place there we go okay so if i just move that there so um this is where you get problems not not ten with this one but these uh, this first compartment here this is where you get problems with the tenosynovitis so it's you i mean look, look at the amount of space that you have in that extensor retinacular none okay it's really efficient so if you have an irritation to this here and it causes irritation of those tendons then that area will be sore you can do something called a, uh, a finkelstein's test uh, you can have a look at it on uh, online but essentially what you do and i do it in stages because this can be really really sore if you're a manual therapist, then it's pretty much guaranteed that this is going to be a positive test. So I'd first of all start with your thumb in a neutral position and then just um, ulnar deviate your wrist. So you're basically stretching the uh, first compartment. OK, and then if that's not sore, then I'll just loosely tuck the thumb in and then do the same again. And then if that's not sore, then I'll get them to wrap their fingers around, squeeze the thumb and then do it again. And if that's not sore, then I will do it. Okay, so I'll do it in all of those stages because that can be 
if you just grab it and do that, and that's the first test you do, they may hit the roof and punch you in the face. So um, you need to make sure that you do it in stages uh, to, to see exactly where, where the tenderness is. Okay, so um, yeah, that, that can be quite sore, that one. So extensor pollutus longus, and you can see it's a little bit further across from, uh, from these uh, first two here, okay? Um, and that then travels all the way down to the end of your um, end of your thumb. In between that one and those two, that's where your ECRL and ECRB sit, okay? So it goes longus brevis. Longus brevis, ECRL, ECRB, longus. Okay. Keep on saying it, keep on saying it. Uh, <coughs> only thing that was sore for me was the last stage and only a two out of 10. Yeah, definitely, definitely not working hard enough, Charlie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In fact, because um, you're a musician as well, so uh, I'd imagine that you, you, your conditioning of those tendons will be really, really good. So you'll be able to tolerate that really well. Um, it, it's really common, especially with new therapists, and that you see it all the time on uh, Facebook feeds. Oh, my thumbs are killing me. Uh, what else can I do? And people are telling them all sorts of weird and wonderful treatment ideas. And it's actually, it's a bit like running. And you go in from zero running to doing half a marathon. And you wonder why your legs are sore. Yeah, it's, it's exactly the same thing with manual therapy. You go from zero, never doing it, to pass your exams and then 10 patients in a day. And you, your thumbs are going to be shot. And um, so, yes, it may be to do with poor technique and whatever, um, but it, it's a lack of conditioning usually. OK, so, uh, yeah, you're obviously well conditioned, Charlie. That's what it is. OK, uh, so we've got um, extensor pollutus brevis and abductor pollutus longus. So those are in that compartment just there. So that's, that's compartment one. So just there. And there you go. So you can, uh, this is really nice, actually. Let me just pause. Oh, I just missed it. Here we go. Let's take that back there. And just pause it on that on that side view. There. Okay. Cool. So there you can see longus, brevis, and then there'll be another two in between there. Remember those, and then longus again. So we've got and um, these three all going into the thumb. Okay. So longus, brevis then ECRL, ECRB, and then longus. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly what you mean, mate. Yeah, uh, Charlie's just said, um, the only part of my body that has good conditioning. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Um, okay, and then this, I put this the wrong way around um, because otherwise, uh, because this is the, um, the other hand. So this is a right hand. Um, but then you kind of have to look at it on this this side so that this is the radius side and obviously the radius over here. So we've got APL, EPB. So that's why this is flipped. OK, I, I couldn't do it any other way. Uh, um, so, uh, yeah, so you've got e, e, APL, so longest brevis, longest brevis, longest. How many times do I have to say that? OK, so um, APL, abductor pollutus longus. Extensor pollutus brevis, and then you've got your second compartment there, and then in your third compartment, extensor pollutus longus, that long one there. Okay, cool. Uh, let's have a look at the rest of this. And there we go, and there's all the attachments. So that's the attachment for the extensor. Uh, lo uh, brevis and longus and that that one on the um, uh, right down at the bottom of the thumb was your abductor so the action abduction and extension there you go cool all done cool good uh, what time are we at Oh, not bad timing either. Good. I, I wonder whether that might run over today. I'm glad it didn't. Yeah, um, I'm sorry there's a lot to cover. I mean, that was one, two, three, four, five muscles. Okay, so you can see the the intricacies around here. Um, the, um, uh, the There was a question the other day Eric Purvis um, put on online about, um, do you need to know your anatomy? And uh, I mean, I'm a bit biased, <laughs> learn anatomy online. Um, but I think 
when you're treating, if you're a massage therapist, doesn't really matter. You don't really need to know it that in depth. If you're going into the more clinical world, definitely. Because if you're looking at um, really, really good clinical reasoning, you need to know your anatomy. Because if you know that um, extensor pollucis longus goes to the end of the thumb, but then the brevis goes to the, um, the first phalanx, you know if I do that and it's sore compared to doing that and it's sore, then you, you know it's more likely to be, um, well, with that one, you don't use brevis. So if that's sore, then it has to be longus that's, that's causing the symptoms. So you can be way more specific with your clinical reasoning when you know your anatomy. Yeah, and you know the direction you, they go in. And we talked about that with the profundus and the superficialis and the fingers. You, you can identify where, where the problems are. So for manual therapy, I don't think um, it, it matters too much. Um, because like I say, with um, like massage in the forearms, you can't say, oh, I'm now on ECRB, I'm now on ECRL. It's really, really difficult. You can feel the tendons, but not the muscles. Um, but if I need to assess whether it's ECRB that's causing tennis elbow, I need to know that ECRB attaches at the base of this finger and then comes up to here on the lateral epicondyle. Because then when I wiggle that and it hurts, then it kind of eliminates most other things. So, um, yeah, you, I think for your assessments, I think anatomy is really important. Uh, but for general kind of massage uh, treatments, um, I, I think you need to know anatomy, obviously, for... Um, knowing what you you are and aren't dealing with um, but um, it's not as important as when you go into those further levels where you have to clinically reason um, and then that also leads into rehab so if you don't do rehab then again the the need for anatomy knowledge is is less but if you do and you want to do specific rehab for specific movements targeting specific areas then you you need to know your stuff so um uh, yeah, so th there we go. Uh, I, I think it depends on the audience. So uh, who would have thought that Learn Anatomy Online thinks that anatomy is important? Okay. <laughs> uh, right then. Um, have a great uh, rest of the week, guys. Uh, th some really good uh, participation today. We have got quite a few in the group, uh, which was really nice. If we can get those questions flowing, that would be great. So next week, we're finishing hopefully finishing off the wrist and hands we're going to look at the intrinsic muscles and then also the uh, blood and nerve supply for the hand and the wrist okay cool cheers guys have a good week i'll see you next monday